Hello everybody and welcome back to the Virtual Flight Academy. My name is Mike Messer. I am a real world pilot, however, I am not a real world instructor. With that being said, do not use any techniques or information in these videos in real world flight. Anyway, let's get on to the video. Today we'll be covering a few topics. We'll be talking about taxiing, run up, and takeoff. These of course have some varieties in them depending on the aircraft you're in. We'll be in the Cessna 152. As always, the link for the POH and the checklist is in the description down below. Once we get to the run up, we'll do what the we should do in during a virtual run up. And then we'll of course do takeoff. Now this is not any type of crosswind takeoff or anything to do with uh, short field or soft field takeoff. It's just a regular takeoff and we'll be doing that today. We will be covering short field and soft field takeoffs as well as crosswind takeoffs at a later date. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we do here is we pick up our ANUS, AWOS, or ASOS, your weather system at the airport you're departing. Now here at Wilson, for some reason, it's not modeled, doesn't have actually an AWOS, even though in real life it does. So that's unfortunate here at Williston, but uh, most airports in 2020 do have it modeled. Uh, once you've tuned that and you've actually picked up the information, what you're looking for is to set your barometric pressure. To do that, all you're going to do is you're going to select this knob under your altimeter. And as you see, as you go down in pressure, your altitude decreases. As you go up in pressure, your altitude increases. Now what we're going to set it to is our standard 29.92, because I know the weather today is perfect weather, standard temperature and pressure. Once we've done that, we'll check our instruments. Now checking your instruments involves just making sure everything looks normal and is, is calibrated correctly. Airspeed indicator, we'll make sure it's not indicating any airspeed while we're sitting still. If it was, could be a problem with your PIDIC static system. I want to check your attitude indicator and make sure that your artificial horizon lines up with your artificial aircraft, which is this orange little line here, or indicator. Clock, you want to make sure your time's correct, of course. Altimeter, want to make sure it's indicating the correct altitude for the airport you're sitting at. Now, Williston sits about 80 feet above the ground, and that's what it's showing right here, so that is correct. I want to make sure we don't have any flags on here showing us something that you know we shouldn't be seeing. Turn coordinator, we'll see that move once we start moving, as well as our heading indicator. Now in real life, we would check our heading indicator against our uh, magnetic compass and make sure they're the same, and they are automatically. You can adjust that, of course, if you need to, uh, but for they sync up here in 2020. Vertical speed indicator, make sure it's not indicating any type of positive or negative vertical speed above 100. So you'll get a little bit up and down here, and that's pretty normal. As long as it's not above 100 or below 100, it's within realm of what they consider to be accurate. Just notate exactly, you know, if it is slightly below or slightly above. While sitting still, just notate that. This is our second uh, OBI here and uh, no flags or anything so it's good to go rpms we are already registering rpms as we've seen when we did our engine start it's our adf needle uh, it is flat we're not using it right now and then over here on the right you'll notice that we have our amperage again hours look good fuel quantity looks correct oil temperature is green oil pressure looks good as well everything looks like the instruments are accurately reading the parameters of the aircraft Next, we'll make sure our doors and windows are closed. Now, the doors, of course, here in 2020 are not modeled. You cannot open or close them, unfortunately. I hope that uh, some payware do allow you to do that because that is some nice uh, simulation there. Next, we'll want to turn on our taxi and navigational lights as required. Now, for me, I always like, if I have them available, I'm going to turn on my taxi light, which is down here. And I'll always turn on my nav lights as well. And this is, of course, just uh, 
my personal preference. You don't technically have to use nav lights here on the Cessna 152. That was built before uh, March of 1996, I believe. But anyway, we're just going to turn them on anyway. All right, so now we've done our before tax checklist, we are going to actually taxi. Now, while we taxi, we're going to look for a couple of things. We're going to look for a turn, turn coordinator to start moving. We're going to look for a heading indicator to start moving. And uh, we shouldn't really see our airspeed indicating because we're not going to be going that fast. Now, normally you would have a chart in your hand showing you the airport diagram. I'm a familiar with Williston, so we're going to be taking a left here on this taxiway. And heading towards uh, the runway so let's go ahead and taxi so what I'm gonna do is uh, press my full uh, manual braking release the parking brake and I'm gonna do this brake test while I right before I taxi so I'm gonna release the parking brake add throttle kill the throttle and apply the brakes and we're gonna make sure we actually stop we do so now we'll continue Now, once we get into radio communications, I'll cover the proper radio communications to use before you taxi, uh, before you take off, and everything like that. But for now, we're just going to actually focus on flying the aircraft and uh, doing it correctly. So we get ourselves lined up here on this taxiway. And take a left here by applying the left rudder pedal. Or if you're using a joystick, turning it to the left. If you have one that actually has the rotation. If not, you can always, of course, use uh, either some buttons on your yoke or keyboard or something to actually manipulate your rudder. Now you'll notice that our turn coordinator has been indicating, as you see, as we go left, it's indicating left and right is indicating right. And that is using electro electronic gyro, which we can go in more detail in the ground school that is associated with this lesson. You also notice the heading indicator is also swinging. And that means that is acting correctly as well. Airspeed's not showing anything. Vertical speed hasn't changed. Altimeter hasn't changed either. Which means that we are, of course, have accurate instruments. And here in 2020, unless you have somehow created a failure, it is going to accurately represent the aircraft itself. So we're just keeping our nose wheel lined up here on the taxiway, the center line, as we taxi. Now once we get into different types of uh, wind directions, you'll notice that I may be turning to the right here with my ailerons, or left, pushing down, or keeping it neutral. Now that is because depending on the wind direction that is a f coming into your or hitting your aircraft and speeds, you actually could end up causing your aircraft to flip. Now the likelihood of your aircraft flipping is very unlikely unless you're in winds of quite a high degree, but it's good practice that no matter what winds you're facing that you uh, use your ailerons to help keep you an elevator to keep you on the ground. Now here at Williston, we have a nice little run-up area here to the left. Uh, and we'll use that for our run-up. Most airports, you won't have that. You can just do it at the whole short line of the runway. But for the sake of ease, we will do it here in the run-up area. Now when you do your run-up, you always want to face into the wind if possible. So, knowing the wind's from 250, what I'm going to do here, swing my aircraft around. And somewhat into the wind. Alright, so what we'll do here is we are going to make sure our doors, of course, are closed and locked. Our parking brake has been set. Flight control is free and correct. So what we're going to look here, again, we've already done this in the pre-flight for your virtual flight controls. We're going to do it again. Make sure that as we turn to the left, the LRN go up, 
turn right, it goes down. Same for the other side. Up when we go right, down when we go left, and then finally we'll check our elevator. Up, down, and then rudder controls left and right. So that is free, and it is correct. Next, what we will do is make sure all of our flight instruments are set. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, we want to make sure our heading indicator equals to our magnetic compass, as we see it does automatically here in 2020. But it's just a nice thing to continue checking, just in case. Barometric pressure is set. That hasn't been changed. If we have to set any type of VORs or GPS, if we had one, uh, anything like that, now would be a perfect time to set all that information. Make sure our fuel shutoff valve is still in the on position. We haven't accidentally hit it. Of course, if we had accidentally hit it, it would probably kill the engine. Next, we want to set mixture to rich, which we are in rich. Elevator trim to take off. We are in the takeoff position now. Throttle, we are going to set it to 1700 RPMs. So we're looking over here at our RPM gauge. And there's 1700 RPMs. Now what we'll do is we'll actually turn our ignition switch, which also controls our magnetos, and we'll turn it to the left magneto. You'll notice a slight drop, or let me say this, you should notice a slight drop in your RPMs, back to both, then right, then back to both. Now I have noticed here the 152, it doesn't indicate the drop in the magnetos, which is funny because when we do the carburetor heat check, which means pulling the carburetor heat, we see a drop as we should, but not with the magnetos, which I found very interesting. You should see about a hundred RPM drop when you turn to magnetos, but it's not currently modeled here in 2020. Once we've done that, we're going to make sure everything is still green, nothing's changed, hasn't caused any issues, things like, like, like that. We'll check our suction. So look at our suction here. We want to make sure it's in the green arc, and we are in the green arc. At this point, we'd set our radios. Uh, of course, right now, we're fine with what they are. We'll get into communications later. Beacon, nav, and strobes. So our beacon's on, our nav's already on, so we'll turn our strobes on. And now we'll check and close our throttle. And what we're looking is to make sure that the RPM drops back down to idle RPM, our engine doesn't die, and nothing crazy happens with our oil pressure. That looks good to me. So we've completed our run up. Next, we will actually taxi and take off. So let's go ahead and release the parking brake. And let's taxi to the runway. Okay, ignore those lights because that's not what they're like in real life. Alright, we're going to hold short of runway 23. We'll go ahead, we'd go ahead and make our radio call here, which we'll get into later. And we want to do one quick checklist before we take off. We want to make sure our flaps are set to whatever we're doing. Today is a normal takeoff, no flaps required, so we'll keep flaps at zero. Carburetor heat, we want to make sure it's in and cold. Throttle will be full, so let's go ahead and taxi onto the runway. Now, as we take off, as we apply thr throttle, you'll notice that the aircraft will want to have a tendency to turn to the left. That is normal. That is uh, several different types of physics acting on the aircraft. Uh, P factor uh, is like what we like to call it. P factor. Um, we also have torque. Uh, a lot of things are actually acting on the aircraft. And if you want to know more about that, I'll cover that again in the ground school uh, for patrons only, flight club members only. All right, so now that we're lined up with the runway, 
we're going to do a normal takeoff. What that means is we're not going to apply full braking and then get full RPM. That's for a later type of takeoff. What we'll do here is just go ahead and apply just a little bit of right rudder pedal. You'll see as we increase throttle here. It's going to want to go to the left. Now, if I just let go of the rudder pedals, you'll see it starts going to the left. So we'll keep it straight on the runway here. As we see the airspeed indicator, oh gosh, very sensitive. In increase, airspeed is alive. Right when we hit 55, 60, we're lifting off. I want to hold this at about 65 knots on the climb out. And that's it for takeoff. Now I have noticed here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, it does have a tendency to want to jerk all over the runway. The physics are just not there with the friction of the tires and everything, uh, but that's okay. They're getting there. So anyway, uh, we will of course continue and we'll do a pattern here and uh, that will be covered in the next lesson. So thanks for watching guys. And don't forget to like, subscribe, Hit that bell notification icon to get notified when I go live next. And I'll see you guys next time up in the sky.